In our spiritual checkup, we're going to look at a very important part of our spiritual fitness. Is God's Word a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path? If we're reading it, then it is. If we're not reading it, then it's not. Let's go to Psalm 119 for our Old Testament lesson. It's the longest of the Psalms. The Psalms were meant to be sung. We don't have the tune anymore. Uh, one of these days, I feel sure archaeologists will discover the tunes for the Psalms and we'll be able to sing them again as they were originally sung. We're going to look at verses 9 through 16. This entire psalm is a tribute to God's Word. And let's listen to what the psalmist says in these verses. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I will seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. And then from the New Testament, the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, verses 10 through 15. In this passage, Paul is on a missionary journey. He's been to a town called Thessalonica. There's a book in the Bible that he writes to the Thessalonians. And Paul doesn't have a very good um, time in Thessalonica. The Jewish people there go after him. And so when he goes to Berea, the town we're going to read about in these verses, he has a much better reception. And let's find out why. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness, and they examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. When the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, they went there too, agitating the crowds and stirring them up. The brothers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. The men who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. This ends the reading of this portion of God's word. May he bless it to our understanding. Would you bow your heads? <clears throat> oh, Father, we thank you for the Bible, <clears throat> preserved for us down through thousands of years. We thank you that whereas other religions are changing their holy books, Christians can relish in the knowledge that the holy book has not changed. That we have manuscripts going back thousands of years. They're exactly what we have today and we don't want to change because we know that you don't change. So may your word truly more and more be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When was the last time you went to the doctor for a checkup? If you've been in church during this series, you've been going to the doctor pretty regularly, all fall, every Sunday. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, Jesus said, but the sick. And spiritually, all of us are sick. We need to go to Dr. Jesus regularly for a checkup. 
Today I want to talk about our diet. Do you need to change your diet? I'm not talking about the amount of food, although we probably all could work on that one. I'm talking about the type of food. And let's narrow it a little bit and talk about the grain that we eat. Do you eat more processed bleach flour or do you eat more whole grain flour? Let's think about bread today. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the Bible nourishes us. And Jesus speaks of the word of God as the bread of life. What we need is better bread. What we read is an indicator of of our spiritual fitness, one of the best. Are we being nourished by the Word of God or do we just read lots and lots of other things or do we not even read at all? What we read is a good indicator of our spiritual fitness. And I want us to reflect on the bread that we're ingesting. Let's talk about the good book. The Bible's been called the good book for so many years. 560 years ago, the Gutenberg Bible was the first book printed using movable metal type. The Gutenberg Bible changed the world. Johann Gutenberg changed the world. Up until then, all the Bibles, all the books, were copied in a painstaking process by scribes. A finger on a word, a pen in the other hand, and they would write each word and move to the next word. Write each word and move to the next word. It took a long time. It was tedious. There were errors. And that was the only way you had a book. And so Bibles, like all books, were expensive and they were rare until Gutenberg came along and he invented this movable type printing press. And up until fairly recently, it was the only way books were published. It changed the world forever. I have a quote from Gutenberg at the top of the sermon notes. He was a devout Christian. And this German Lutheran wanted the Word of God to be easily accessible to everybody. That's why he printed his first book, a Bible. It was three volumes. The Gutenberg Bible was in Latin, three volumes. There aren't many of them who re- that remain today, but it's a treasure. And you and I owe a lot to Gutenberg. So let me ask you, do you read more and you fill in the blank than you read the Bible? Do you read more textbooks? Do you read more blogs than you read the Bible? Do you read more Facebook posts than you read the Bible? Do you read more articles or novels or the newspaper than you read the Bible? And I'm asking you this not to give you a guilt trip, but to give you a desire to be nourished, to get you excited about being nourished by the Word of God. Charles Spurgeon wrote, Nobody ever outgrows Scripture. Nobody. Instead, the book widens and deepens with our years. The more you read the Bible, the more you'll want to read the Bible. Let's talk about some Bible study veterans. It's the Sunday before Veterans Day. Let's talk about some other kind of veterans. First of all, let's talk about an individual, the psalmist, the author of the 119th Psalm. Most of the Psalms were written by David. This one was not. This is written by another man. And he writes something very interesting in verse 16. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. He's saying because God nourishes him, he's going to make God a promise. Maybe we could do that this morning and ask God to help us keep it, that we will not neglect the word of God. And then let's talk about a group of Bible study veterans, the Bereans. Back in the day, lots of Sunday school classes were called the Berean Sunday school class. Why? Because the Bereans 
we read in Acts, were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. They received the message with great eagerness. They were excited about the Bible. And they examined the Scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. The Bereans didn't just read the Bible on Sunday. Y'all have heard me say before, if you're new, this is the first time you've heard me say it, but it's very true. If you're not reading the Bible every day, you're starving to death spiritually. You're starving yourself. You need to be nourished. And God's provided the way. Then let's talk about another individual who was a Bible study veteran. Her name was Aunt Amelia. Aunt Amelia. She was not my aunt, but she was the aunt of a lady in my first church in Greenfield. Ruby Hope used to tell the story about Aunt Amelia. It's a story that fascinated me then and it still fascinates me. When Ruby Hope was a little girl back in the 30s, she had to go with her parents to visit her mother's sister, Amelia, and she was scared of Amelia because Amelia was an invalid. She was in the bed and she was blind, so her eyes had the white cast to them, to the pupils, and she was scared of Amelia. But back then, as good southern families did, you went and visited your relatives. And so her mother would say, come on, Ruby, we're going to go in and see Amelia. Mom, I don't want to see Amelia. Come on, darling. And Amelia would be in the bed, an invalid. Her long white hair would be spread out down over the pillowcase and over the sheets. And she would say, come here, Ruby. And she would come closer to her. And Amelia knew that children were scared of her. And so she made those visits a game. And she would say, Ruby, honey, I've memorized the entire Bible. I used to be able to see. And we'll make this a game. If you say a chapter and verse, I'll tell you what it is. If you say the verse, the verse itself, I'll give you the chapter and verse. Ruby liked that. So, for example, she would say, Aunt Amelia, what is John 3.16? And Aunt Amelia would say, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. And if little Ruby were to say that verse, Aunt Amelia would say it's John 3.16. But of course, there are a lot of verses in the Bible. And a lot of them are very difficult, and so Ruby would pick the most difficult ones. Tell me what Leviticus 3.2 says. And Aunt Amelia would say it. If Ruby said 2 Samuel 3.22... And Amelia could tell her exactly what it was. To me, that's one of the greatest stories I've ever heard. I wish I had met Aunt Amelia. Because you know what? Your pastor couldn't do that. I doubt that any of us could do that. James Quillen had a photographic memory. He probably could do that. But I never knew anybody like that. It's a challenge to me and it's exciting. So let's think about us as the fourth group of Bible study veterans. What about us? Aunt Amelia is kind of almost an unreachable point. But for the rest of us, we could get started, couldn't we? Now, a lot of you are Bible study veterans. And a lot of us could stand to do better. And so I'm going to tell you what I say sometimes to my Bible study class, the old Nike slogan, just do it. Are you reading your Bible? If the answer is no, then just do it. If the answer is yes, occasionally, Pastor, then read it some more. If it's yes, I'm reading it, I study it, and for me, the book has widened and deepened, then good on you and keep it up. First of all, make the time. That's how you do it. And if you say to yourself, I don't think I have time, then you're lying to yourself because you spend your free time doing lots of things. Even if you don't have much free time, my grandfather used to say, son, you're going to do what you want to do. And he was right. Number two, make personal Bible study a habit, a good habit. 
That means that you do it regularly. And no matter what, you do it. One way to work on that is to pick a particular time in the day that works best for you. And if it's mornings, like for me, then I do my Bible study in the morning. If it was evening, my family can tell you after 9 o'clock, I'm doing this, or maybe by 8.30 I'm doing that if I'm home. If morning doesn't work for you and, you and that's your time, then pick lunchtime. If that doesn't work for you, do it when you're driving and listen to, to it on, uh, on iTunes, listen to it uh, on a tape, a CD, whatever. Number three, make use of technology. We live in a time in which you don't have to have the book. And if this is hard for you or you're just not accustomed to books anymore like lots of young people today, then use technology. Download a Bible app. Have a daily devotion sent to your inbox. Go to a Christian blog. Read the scriptures. And then fourth, make group Bible study a priority. Sunday school starts at 945 every Sunday. Are you going to Sunday school or do you leave? If you have something that you usually do on Sunday morning, well, rearrange your schedule so you can come to a group Bible study. There are lots of options. On Wednesday night, we have Bible studies. Lots of different options. It's a way to recharge your battery. The women have Bible studies. The men have a Bible study the first Thursday of every week. Or is it second, Rob? Second Thursday of every week. Some people have Bible studies at their workplace. A lot of students have Bible studies at school. Make group Bible study a priority. The old hymn says it like this. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me, as thou didst break the loaves beside the sea. Long ago, Jesus performed a miracle. A little boy came to him with his lunch. He didn't have much. And Jesus took that little bit, those little round barley loaves, and he broke them and multiplied them. And that's what God still does through Bible study. Don't you like the aroma of fresh baked bread? Don't you like the taste? of fresh baked bread. Let God's word nourish you. Will you work on your spiritual diet? Let's pray together. Oh Lord, we can in our mind's eye see a fresh baked loaf of bread. We can smell it. We can taste it. And it makes us hungry. In the same way, would you make us hungry for the bread of life? In your Son's name, amen. Closing hymn is hymn 271, Standing on the Promises. Let us stand together as we sing all the verses. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let the praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail. By the living water, God our Calvary veil, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises.
says God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by His love sword, overcoming daily with my spirit sword. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot Listening every moment to my Savior's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Let's stand on the promises of God today, tomorrow, every day, every week, 24-7. If God's calling you to join this church, I'd love to talk to you about reaffirming your faith, transferring your membership, professing your faith for the first time. I'm available 24-7. And now may God's grace, mercy, and peace be in abide with each of you and those you love now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.